For hundreds of great shows like this one, go to onnetworks.com. Play Value is brought to you by Xbox Live Marketplace. Nintendo and Atari. You would think these two video game pioneers would be the best of friends, but you really should not invite them to the same dinner party. Atari was synonymous with video games for a long time, the way Nintendo is now. And uh, they fell off their throne, they made some miscalculations, they made some bad decisions, and uh, they weren't the number one guy anymore. But Nintendo took on Atari's role, and Nintendo's success just like fueled the fires again, and gave Atari this last glimmer of hope that they could be back on top of the industry. Atari released the 7800 in an attempt to compete with Nintendo. And when that didn't work out, Atari decided to drop the whole console thing and say, hey, all right, we're just gonna make games for Nintendo instead. One of the reasons Atari fell from grace in the first place is just uh, so many games were coming out that it was impossible to keep track of what were the good ones and what were the bad ones. And the bad ones were so overwhelming that people just started to think that's what video games are. They're garbage. Nintendo wanted to reassure its customers that they were going to get good games from them. So what they did is decide to put the Nintendo seal of quality on their games and then limited other companies and told them, hey, you can only make five games a year for our console. So you have to pick the best five games because we're not going to flood our console with crappy games. We saw what it did to Atari. We've seen the past and we don't want that. We want to have some kind of quality control. So Nintendo says no more than five games a year. And in order to ensure that happens, they put a security system in the Nintendo called the 10 NES code. And what it is, is kind of a lock and key system where there's a special chip in the Nintendo games that matches the chip inside the Nintendo. And if both aren't present, the game doesn't start. When a cartridge was put into the console, they communicated. And it was like, this is a real game, this isn't a real game. If it was a real game, you could play it. If it wasn't a real game, meaning authorized by Nintendo, it wouldn't play. So by limiting companies to only creating five games a year for their system, they really did ensure that they got the best games from those companies. The companies didn't like being limited to five games a year, but because they were, you see some of the games that come out here are some of the best games ever. Capcom's releasing Mega Man, Bionic Commando, Ghosts and Goblins. Konami's putting out stuff like Contra, stuff like Castlevania, Metal Gear Gradius. There's just so many great games that even today, they still make sequels to because they were so good that even 20 years later, people still want Castlevanias because of those first few. Okay, when Atari gets this news that Nintendo's only gonna allow them five games, Atari's like, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. We invented video games. We invented the home console. You're not gonna limit us to five. Nintendo says, listen, you guys were first, we respect that, but you gotta play by the same rules as everybody else. Atari was not happy with this at all. It's all about ego. Atari couldn't stop third-party providers from making crapware for their system. So when Nintendo tries to do that, they're like, whoa, we couldn't do it. What makes you think you can do it? Oh, you guys have a secret code. Damn it, why didn't we come up with a secret code? Atari wants special rules, they wanna put out more games, Nintendo says no, this goes back and forth for months. Finally, Atari says fine. So Atari, through their subdivision Tengen, puts out three games. RBI Baseball, Gauntlet, and Pac-Man. And that's gonna be the end of it. We're just gonna start moving and then we'll see how it goes, you know? Maybe we'll put out more games, maybe we won't, you know? No big deal. Now this is where the story gets good. Because secretly, <laughs> Atari has a plan. The Atari execs sit around, they're like, okay, we're gonna play by the rules. We're gonna give them their five games but we're gonna break this code. We're gonna find out what this secret Nintendo code is. Atari first tried to hack the system, bought a bunch of NESs, cracked them open, gave them to their best programmers, monitored how the software interacted with the hardware in hopes of finding that unique little trigger that they could then bypass when they made their own games. You know, they tried to look at it and see what information was being sent back and forth. They were like, now we'll, we'll steal this the correct way. But then when that didn't work, they were like, all right, never mind. We'll just take it from the copyright office. Atari goes to the copyright office and they submit a request to see the Nintendo code. 
well, the copyright office, you know, fine. What is, why do you need to see the code? Atari says, well, we were sued by Nintendo and in order for our legal team to create a proper defense, we have to see what this code is so that we can then, you know, fight this legal battle. Copyright office doesn't know, what do they do? They release the code to them. This isn't just like one rogue Atari employee who's trying to wrong Nintendo. This is an entire corporation committing a major crime. Really a, a very elaborate scheme to break the rules and then try to change them retroactively. So now Atari's sitting on the secret Nintendo code. And then in turn, they sue them for a hundred million dollars. They sue them for a hundred million dollars because they've been monopolizing the industry. Nintendo, they weren't gonna take this lying down. They said, we're gonna take this to the street. This is gonna be a street fight. So they went to all the toy retailers and they said, listen, we got this tiff going on with Atari. We'll tell you what's gonna happen. If you carry any of their stuff, you're not getting any more Nintendo stuff. So no matter who wins these lawsuits, Nintendo still wins. Nintendo for the win. The fact is Nintendo just owned the market. They dominated toy stores. They're accounting for half of a store like Toys R Us's profits. The court case took a while to drag on, but the results are almost meaningless because Nintendo just bullied Atari out of stores. They had that much clout. Um, they kind of were operating like a monopoly. There's warehouses full of games that people would have bought but no one's willing to sell them because they didn't want to upset Nintendo. I mean, basically, Atari now needed to win this lawsuit against Nintendo. Everything wrote on this because they weren't making any money in the marketplace with these games. What happens next, um, because they so clearly stole it using sneaky and underhanded, I mean, kind of like a Boris and Natasha style plot, because of the way they got this, um, they don't do very well in court. Atari brought a, an extra, a fair and valid antitrust argument to bear, but completely ruined their credibility by engaging in theft, in copyright theft. But it never even got to that. It just, case was dropped, they settled out of court, Atari ultimately paid Nintendo something for stealing from them, and then Atari disappears. <laughs> Eventually the code was cracked, as almost all codes are, and one person was making games, Wisdom Tree, who put out some classics like Sunday Fun Day. And basically they hacked a secret code and made Bible games. So Nintendo heard about it and they were like, man, do we really want to sue these guys? You know, we're trying to tell parents like games aren't the devil, but then we're going to try to sue a church. Uh-uh, I don't think so. Nintendo in the true fashion of the Bible decided that they were just going to turn the other cheek on this one and let Wisdom Tree do their thing. This whole story is the beginning of a lot of bad blood between Nintendo and Atari and it would continue for many years, but it was never really a big deal just because Atari was never really any competition. Atari always wanted to be what Sega would eventually become, which is a real second company with a real strong chance at dethroning the king. Rated E10 plus the T. the games everyone wants to play. For hundreds of great shows like this one, go to onnetworks.com.